Hello again on my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. In this video, which as usually goes together or accompanies a written update on my blog, I am trying something slightly new. Uh, I am still developing on the like the same thread of thought uh, that I had been developing over the, my last two updates. So the mathematical model of mean reversion, which is one of the takes that we can have on what we call the stochastic process. And uh, this time I am trying to I am, I am trying something slightly challenging, but tempting in the same time. Uh, instead of using slides, so instead of using pictures to assist my speech, I will try to convey uh, my message just with words. Huh? It is something I want to re I, I really want to try how to get across a complex idea essentially expressed with equations in simple words. Huh? I think uh, th that if I want to be like a science speaker and a good teacher to my students, I need that skill. Uh, so I need that skill to express uh, complex ideas with simple words. Huh? So here is the thing. In this update, I am developing on that idea of mean reversion. So on the equation that you can that you could have seen in my last two updates on my blog Discover Social Sciences. This time I am trying to go like really deep. I am trying to make the connection between the logic of that mathematical model and uh, cognitive mechanisms, cognitive processes that occur in our brain, in our mind. Hmm. Uh, by the way, uh, as usually, for those who who see those videos of mine for the first time, in the description box below the video, you can see a link to my blog, discoversocialsciences.com. You click on the link and on the blog you will find an update with the same title as this video that you are watching. So the two are paired. Okay, I'm returning to the main thread of my today's development. So I stick to the logic of mean reversion. And the first step in this video, I will try to express this logic very simply, without any slides, without any pictures, without showing any equations. Imagine that you have some habitual expectations as for what is going to happen today. It is, we could call it, it is the moving average of your perception. Then, uh, there is just as habitual expectation of what could possibly go like away from that average. Huh? So essentially, uh, we have habits as for perceiving change in reality. And those habits and those habits form the base of our perception. Anything we perceive, we sort of bounce against or bounce on uh, the, the acquired knowledge against what we have learned. That's the logic of mean reversion. At any given moment, we have some acquired, accumulated knowledge, which serves to us as the frame of reference to perceive and to assess any new phenomenon or any change in the phenomena we observe. So that's the, let's say, the most general, the deep philosophical frame. I, 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 I want to move in in this specific update on my blog. The next step, the next step in this update is to make like an imaginary world a, a little bit in the lines of what my students know from my course of macroeconomics. I make a world, a world, a universe uh, made of sectors. In this case, I just went a little bit crazy on uh, uh, as for statistics of prices, and I collected four goods with uh, which are being massively traded, uh, uh, like in standardized markets. Those goods are uranium, cobalt, pork meat, and coffee. Hmm? I collected 
a time series of prices, of daily trading prices, or rather the closing prices of every day of trade in those four goods over the last year. So with this update, uh, there is an Excel file which you can uh, download by clicking a link in this update on my blog. Uh, with four time series of prices, uranium, cobalt, pork meat and coffee. And those four uh, time series of prices, those four prices, I sort of filter through a complex, uh, uh, a complex system of mean reverted prices or mean reversion. Uh, and you can see here three three uh, alternative perceptions of reality based on that general construct of habit expressed as mean reversion. So there is the cumulative mean reversion. It is the a mean, uh, a mean uh, reversion where I essentially accumulate my knowledge as for what to expect from the beginning of time, so in this case from the 9th of April 2019 on. So every day in the time series uh, I include like more data in the estimation of the mean reverted price. The second option or the second alternative is what I presented all, already in my past two updates. So a mean reversion based on a 30 day window. I have a moving average and the moving standard deviation uh, and they move over a window of 30 days. And finally, I have a, a, a third version of mean reverted prices based on a seven day window, so on a short window of perception. And uh, I am playing a little bit with those three alternative windows of perception as regards those four goods uranium, cobalt, coffee, and pork meat, and their prices, of course. And uh, in my next step, uh, I make a simple neural network, uh, a multi-layer perceptron made of six layers. You can find in the text, in the text of my update, you can find the, let's say, the more or less detailed description of that neural network. How is it structured? Uh, and uh, the originality of that network is that instead of putting like real actual prices as the input data, I put those three alternative mean reversions of price. So the logic is the following. First of all, I per perceive reality uh, with the logic of mean reversion. So I put in phases, I focus on habits rather than focusing on what is really new, on what I want to learn as new material. And the interesting observation uh, is that when I do that, when I apply a neural network based on this logic to studying and to estimating the prices of those four goods, uranium, cobalt, coffee and pork meat, that neural network consistently underestimates the market price. It is as if mathematically focusing on habits uh, and mathematically focusing on what is the most logically expected based on past experience, I underestimate the magnitude of the actual present magnitude of phenomena that I am studying. It is interesting because I use that model of mean reversion uh, to give something like a logical frame to my investment uh, strategy in the stock market. So now, after that whole chain of reasoning that I present in this update on my blog, I know that I need something else. I need, of course, the mean reversion because it gives uh, some kind of like healthy conservatism uh, to my strategy of investment. Yet, I need something else. In next updates, I will think about applying the logic of options maybe uh, based on the Poisson distribution, so the distribution of rare events, very much used in the foundational logic of the Bitcoin, maybe. Okay, so this was an experiment. I, uh, I haven't the faintest idea how clear or how foggy 
uh, has been that oral exposition that you have just watched. So now you can go to the description box below the video, click on the link, look for the update of on my blog with the same title as this video, and you can just test how what is the correspondence, what is the real connection that you can perceive between what I have just said in that video and what you can read in the update. Okay, so hi and have a nice Monday.